Hello everyone! In today's video I wanted to do something a little bit different and show you a painting that I did recently. I've been getting into doing sort of watercolour paintings while I've been away from uni and yeah I wanted to show you the painting that I did and talk you through the steps that I took to paint it so that you can paint your own hot air balloon if you would also like to do so. Um, so to start off I took a bluey grey shade that I mixed using some blue paints and some a little bit of black and I took a lot of water on the brush and filled in the furthest away mountain as you could see. I then mixed myself a sort of sage green shade and I used that to paint these two hot air balloons that are sort of in the distance behind the main focus of the painting. So then following that I took that same sagey green shade and I used that to do the alternating stripes on my hot air balloon as you can see. Um, when I was drawing it I made it so that it's made up of different stripes and then the alternating stripes have got stripes on them. I don't know if that makes any sense but you can sort of see what I'm doing through the video. <laughs> This painting is inspired by one that I saw on the channel Jenny Journals and I will of course link that video that I saw below so that you can watch that as well. I wanted to recreate it because I really really loved the like the composition of the painting that she'd come up with but I'm a massive colour lover so I wanted a lot more colour in my own version than Jenny put in hers. Um, so Jenny's version is sort of more moody, more um, monochrome and yeah it's a really lovely painting so I'd really recommend that you check it out if you like this one. So then following that I used the same blue grey shade that I'd used before and I had a little bit less water on my brush this time and I used that to paint a mountain that's a little bit closer to us, the viewer, than the one that I did before. And I then used that shade to create shadows in the mountain that I'd already painted now that that one was dry. And then I mixed myself a more vibrant green, it's sort of more of an emerald green rather than a sage green and I used that to do the stripes on the second closest hot air balloon and then to fill in the other stripes that I didn't do on my main focus hot air balloon as well. If you are interested as well, the paints that I'm using at this moment are the Windsor and Newton ones, I've got a large like pan palette of their watercolours and I absolutely adore it, it's gorgeous. They're so pigmented and lovely. <laughs> um, I will leave a link in the description to where you can pick those up from Amazon. I do have an affiliate link with Amazon so if you buy through that link that's in the description I will get a small commission. It's going to cost no extra money to you but it will mean that I'm able to continue feeding my cats on demand. So once the mountains had dried again so that the colours didn't bleed, I used that same emerald green shade that I just used on the stripes to do the top and bottom stripes of that little bit on the bottom of the balloon. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you couldn't see it because, unfortunately, the framing of the video cut it off. I apologise for that, this is the first time I ever filmed top down. But I just used a darker blue-grey shade to do another mountain that's a little bit closer to us, the viewer. And I used that shade to create more shadows on the second furthest away mountain that I'd already painted. I then mixed this gorgeous sort of foresty green shade and I used that to do the remaining stripes that are on my hot air balloon. I mentioned before that I've never actually done this top, top down style of filming before. Um, so I do apologise that the framing's a little bit odd, um, it's a little bit tricky to see the bottom of the painting. Um, I am disappointed that that happened, but I'd already filmed it, so what could I do? Um, if you do have any tips or anything to help me with that, then I'd really appreciate it. And as well, I'm not, very, I'm not an expert in watercolouring or in filming and editing these videos, so if you do have any feedback about how I can improve my painting skills or how I can improve my videos and make them better for you to watch, then yeah, I'd really appreciate that feedback. So once I'd let that forest green dry, I mixed this, I call it a muted lime shade. I don't know if lime is a shade that can be muted, but if it is, this is that. And I painted that center strip in the big hot air balloon. It is really important when you're using watercolors to make sure that you let the colours that are going to be touching the bit that you're painting, make sure that you let those dry fully because otherwise they end up bleeding into one another and that can create a really lovely effect but when you don't mean for that to happen and it happens, it's infuriating. So just save yourself a bit of, bit of frustration, take a break, step away from the painting, let everything dry and then go back to it. I then mixed a brown shade and I used that to paint the baskets as you can see on the far away hot air balloons and I also used them to paint the one on the hot air balloon that's closest to us but again unfortunately you can't see that and the step that I just talked over then was I used a circular object to draw a circle halfway through the mountains and that's going to be my sun. The way that I created this sunset gradient effect was I mixed reds, oranges and yellows in the pan and with plenty of water on the brush I painted them across in stripes and I went down from red to orange and then to yellow. Um, if you've got plenty of water on your brush then it means that the colours are able to blend really seamlessly and it creates this really lovely effect. I would also recommend swapping between brushes. You can see that I go from a small brush to a larger brush and the large brush covers a really good amount of surface area so it doesn't take you a year and a half to paint a sunset but then the smaller brush allows you to get into the little details so around these farther away hot air balloons as you can see it makes it so much easier if you're using a small brush just to outline those and then you can go in with your big brush and blend the shades together again. I was super duper happy with how the sunset came out. I was a bit worried that the gradient effect wouldn't work as I hoped it would. But yeah, I think it ended up really effective and it worked really well. Thank you. 
So once my sunset had dried, I used a gold shade from my Fine Tech Colairo palette. It's like metallic golds and silvers and it's absolutely beautiful. But this is the first time that I ever used it and I didn't allow the water to sink into the paint as much as you're supposed to. So it was a little bit desaturated so I let that dry, let the water soak into the paint pan a little bit more and then when I went back over it it was so much more pigmented as you can see. So I used that gold shade to do the sun and then this stripe along the bottom of the hot air balloon and finally I used it in this little centre section of the hot air balloon to paint the phases of the moon and that is something that I completely stole from Jenny Journals so again make sure you check out that video in the description. One of the things that I absolutely love about these paints is how reflective they are when they're dried. It sort of looks like I painted gold leaf on there, but it's not, it's just gold watercolour. <laughs> so then, once all of the paint had dried completely, I took one of my favourite fine liners. These are the Unipin fine liners, and I outlined the drawing to make everything a bit sharper, a bit crisper, a bit more defined and I used the 0.05 width to do smaller details so like the further away balloons and the, the details of the moon phases on the big one and then I used 0.1 to do everything else so like the mountains and to outline the actual hot air balloon itself. You can see here that I actually changed up the framing of the video. Let me know if you prefer it with the top chopped off or the bottom chopped off. Let me know what's more helpful. Obviously in an ideal world you'd see the entire painting and it wouldn't be chopped off at all, but you get what you're given. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So my final step was to take a 0.03 Unipin fineliner and create the ropes that attach the balloon to the basket. I sincerely hope that you've enjoyed this video. It's the first of its kind but I really hope that it won't be the last. I enjoyed creating this even if the framing was a little bit dodgy. <laughs> As I mentioned before, if you do have anything to say, please feel free to say it in the comments. I really appreciate your feedback. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this, then subscribe to my channel. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely day and goodbye.